Separatist rebels killed nearly 20 people, including women and children, in an attack on a village in one of Cameroon's Anglophone regions, the government said Mandi. There were men, women, and children, more than 20 killed. Minister at the presidency, Mengot Victor Alei Ngokho, told Public Radio. The overnight assault occurred at Egbekau village in western Cameroon, the scene of deadly clashes between rebels and government forces for seven years. No group has claimed responsibility for the attack. According to public broadcaster Sierra TV, the prefect of Manu Viang Mekala announced investigations had been launched to identify the perpetrators. Seven people were wounded. Cameroon is primarily English speaking northwest and southwest regions have been gripped by conflict since separatists declared independence in 2017. It followed decades of grievances over perceived discrimination by the Francophone majority. In the middle of the night, terrorists opened fire with guns and used traditional arms, Manu Department Perfect Viang Makela said on the radio. There are about 20 dead and seven seriously wounded, a dozen houses burnt, he added. President Paul Bia, 90 years old, whose party, the RDPC, celebrated his 41-year rule over the country on Monday, has responded with a crackdown and national dialogues that were criticized. The conflict has claimed more than 6,000 lives and forced more than a million people to flee their homes, according to the International Crisis Group. It happened at 4 a.m. Armed young people came and fired on sleeping residents in their houses and set a whole block of houses on fire. A resident told AFP by telephone requesting not to be identified over safety concerns. 23 people have already been removed from the debris, some of whom are not even rec recognizable because of the fire, the resident added. He said, there was reason to believe it was connected to the November 6th anniversary of Paul Biyars to the presidency in 1982. A meeting of the ruling Cameroon People's Democratic Movement, RDPC, was planned in the area. Both the separatists and government forces have been accused of atrocities in the fighting. Armed groups are regularly accused of abducting killing or injuring civilians, whom they accuse of collaborating with Cameroonian authorities. Security forces are also often accused by international NGOs and the United Nations of killings and torture against civilians suspected of sympathizing with the rebels. In July, Amnesty International reported that security forces, separatist rebels, and ethnic militiamen had committed atrocities in the northwest region, including executions, torture, and rape. Guinean authorities made additional arrests on Monday following the weekend jailbreak that freed former military leader Captain Musa Dadis Kamara. Kamara was recaptured a few hours later Saturday. Reporter Karim Kamara in Kunakri tells me that the government sacked 80 members of the regular security forces after accusing them of collaborating with the jailbreakers. He also says life is returning to normal in the capital Kunakri, although residents remain fearful. Um, about 80 members of the security forces who were there and, um, at the time of, um, of the attack have all been, have all been sacked. And uh, also including some soldiers uh, who were also um, in the barracks close um, to the prison yard. Some of them have also been sacked. According to the spokesperson for the government, uh, Gawal Jallo, he said that they have proof to show that um, the soldiers were responsible for these guys to infiltrate right into the prison yards. They said they opened the doors for the guys. So we don't know whether it is true or it's just a way to blame those soldiers. But the Minister of Justice himself came out publicly again to say, look, uh, the, the others who are there are not armed. But the soldiers outside who are manding in and out of the prison yards, we are well armed. 
So the um, $100 million question people are asking now is how come these guys were able to sneak into uh, the prison yard and then get uh, these guys outside without being arrested and without being seen doing so? Can you describe for us the situation in Conakry now following the jailbreak? I mean, what is the environment like? Are people free to move around? Uh, the situation in Conakry is calm. People are going about their daily activities. But, you know, they are still going out, in and out with fear, you know, in their stomach. People are afraid because uh, we are facing uh, the, a wide-scale insecurity now in Conakry. And uh, a lot of proofs have been seen. You no, know, why to say that we have we are facing a lot of insecurity in Conakry? But then um, people now they go out very early in the morning, and you see them coming back, and um, you see them come back in the evening. So nobody is uh, venturing to stay out as like before until one or two in the morning. So and um, people are outside now, but the people are really scared. Guineans don't know what and what will happen within the next few um, days, weeks, or months in the country due to uh, what is happening now. Some of them are even saying that um, PV has not yet been found up till now. And uh, people know who is PV indeed. His military petition is very tough. And he's a no-nonsense soldier. And um, what is up in his sleeve, nobody knows. And also those soldiers that, that have been sacked, how, what are they going to do next? Are they going to accept their seconds or what? So we have all these questions on the table which ordinary Guineans are asking. That's reporter Karim Karmara in the Guinea capital, Conakry. As the world marks Lung Cancer Awareness Month in November, the disease remains a public concern globally, causing millions of deaths around the world. There were more more than 2.2 million new cases of lung cancer in 2020. The World Health Organization, the WHO, indicates that tobacco smoking is the primary risk factor for lung cancer and that it can also affect non-smokers. Maureen Ojiambo reports. Lung cancer is the second most common form of cancer worldwide, accounting for more than 1.6 million deaths per year globally. This year's 2023 theme to call attention for the disease focuses on education, empowerment and eradication that aims to raise awareness of lung cancer signs and the benefits of the early diagnosis to access medical care. Oncologist Catherine Nyongesa explains how the disease evolves. Lung cancer is a type of cancer that begins in the cells of the lung. It can occur in both the the trachea, that is the windpipe, and the bronchi. These are small tubes in the lungs. The exact frequency or incidence of lung cancer can vary over time and may not always be accurately documented due to differences in data collection and healthcare infrastructure. Yongesa says lung cancer is frequently diagnosed at an advanced stage and this reduces treatment options and survival rates and that lung cancer screening is not as advanced as other cancers. She says many challenging factors play in diagnosing lung cancer. Lung cancer often remains asymptomatic in early stages, making it extremely difficult to detect. There are also non-specific symptoms. When symptoms do appear, they can be similar to other respiratory conditions leading to a delayed diagnosis. According to the WHO, 99% of the world's population breathe unhealthy air as the urgency to address this environmental health crisis continues to grow. Lung cancer risk factors include exposure to secondhand smoke, occupational hazards, air pollution, hereditary cancer syndromes, and previous chronic lung cancer diseases. In Africa, industrial exposures such as chrome, coal, copper, gold, nickel, arsenic, and silica are associated with lung cancer most of which had relative lower odds compared to tobacco exposure or use. Smoking as a leading cause of lung cancer is responsible for approximately 85% of all cases. It is influenced by factors such as tobacco smoking, exposure to indoor air pollution from biomass fuels, environmental factors, and other risk factors. In Africa, many genetic and environmental factors that are associated with increased exposure to lung malignancy are tobacco, exposure to outdoor air pollution, diets, and pre-existing lung diseases. For VOA Africa, I am Moreno